In a lot of my content, you will see myself talking with a phone screen next to me, and it is a live capture of my phone screen. I get asked a lot how I am accomplishing this, what software I'm using to display my phone screen on my computer. And I actually have two different ways to do this. One is just a very cheap USB capture card and an HDMI cable that turns into a USB-C cable. That's what you're actually seeing right now. But there is another method. And in this video, I want to talk about that other method. It is called screen copy. As you can see, it's written like this, S-C-R-C-P-Y. I don't know why it's written that way, but it is pronounced as screen copy. And this software is very, very useful. And with this 3.0 update, it's actually getting a brand new feature that I think might be fun to play around with. I almost forgot to mention this. One of the best things about screen copy is that even on devices like older Pixels, the original Pixel Fold that cannot do USB-C to HDMI, it will still work. It bypasses that. So first off, I'm going to show you how to basically quote unquote install this because you don't actually install. There's nothing to install on your phone and you don't install a program on your computer either. You just download this thing and you run it. It's actually very, very lightweight. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to look for get the app. Of course, I am using Windows. So we're going to click on that and we're going to download the latest release 64 bit. We jump over to my downloads folder. There it is right there. I'm going to extract this here and it's going to be in its own folder. Now I actually have this nice uh, tidy folder at the root of my C drive called ADB and it's where I keep a lot of utilities like this. So I'm going to go ahead and plop that folder down right there. If we jump into that folder, you will see the screen copy application there. And if you want to grab that, you can pin it to your start or whatever you wanted to make it so that it's easier to access. You can create a shortcut and then you can pin that shortcut to your taskbar, however you want to make this thing easier to access. But for right now, what we actually need to do is jump back over to the phone because we need to enable developer options. Of course, if you've already done that, you can skip this part. But for those who haven't, you're going to go into your settings. You're going to go down to about phone all the way down at the bottom. You're looking for build number. You're going to tap that a bunch of times until it pops up and says you are now a developer. Now, back under system, you should see a new section called developer options. Under developer options, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for USB debugging. Go ahead and turn that on. And now you can plug your phone into your computer with a USB A to C or C to C cable. At this point, you should get a pop up on your phone asking you to allow USB debugging. Go ahead and tick the box for always allow and then click on allow. At this point, you should be able to simply run screen copy. You're going to get this pop up right here that looks a bit like that. And then shortly after that, you should get this. You should get your phone screen running inside this window. And the beautiful thing about this is that unlike using a capture card, I can interact with my phone. I can use my mouse to click on things and to do whatever I want to do on my phone. I can even use the keyboard on my computer to type. All that stuff works just fine. I can also have my audio passing through to my computer's speakers. This is very, very handy. Maybe I'm the only one who is searching for a way to play the new Pokemon TCG Pocket game on their computer, but this is one potentially great way to go about it, and you can actually just use your mouse to interact with the game. Drag this thing over to another window. Maybe you're getting some work done over here. You're playing some Pokemon over there. Maybe you're grinding an event and you're auto battling or something like that. This could be an interesting way to do this. But if we jump back to their web page, there's a new feature that I want to talk about, or at least I think that this is new. Virtual display. If you click on this, you see some different commands that you can use and what this is going to do is rather than having an exact copy of your phone screen, which is exactly what your phone screen is doing on your computer is what's happening on your phone. It's just a mirroring actually just tapped the weather application. It will actually create a virtual display, kind of like Samsung Dex. Your phone will remain free to do whatever you want to do with it while there's this other screen being generated by your phone that can run other apps. 
So the way that we do this is like this. We're just going to grab this one right here that says new display. It's going to be the same, basically the same size and shape as your normal display. We're going to copy that. Then we can jump back over here and we're looking for open a terminal here. And if we click on that, it's going to open a terminal here. And we can then paste in that command. And what is going to load up now, instead of what we just got, a copy of our phone screen, we're gonna get something that looks a bit like this. It's a blank phone screen. You can see that my phone is fully operational still. This is a Pixel 9 Pro Fold. We may need to test this on some other phones in the later part of this video. But this is the sort of half functional Pixel desktop mode that it is showing. Here is a little app drawer. And if I go and let's just click on an application, we'll do threads. It's going to open this thing up. Now, there are problems here, right? Like, I don't have any way to, like, control going home, going back, things like that. So this is, like, again, the broken desktop mode. But you could potentially find maybe some things that you could do to make this work. There's that taskbar application. Maybe that would be useful on this. I've not really tested it. But at the end of the day, this is kind of cool. I want to make this very clear. Here I am running YouTube and my phone that is powering this is totally unaffected by this. I'll also say that in developer options, these are the only relevant things that I have changed. Enable freeform windows and enable non-resizable in multi-window. And the freeform windows thing doesn't really seem like it's doing anything in this little virtual window. So not really sure what's going on there. You should, in theory, be able to shrink these things down and drag them around. If forced desktop mode is on and you plug it into an external monitor, that's what happens. So maybe if I turn force desktop mode on, maybe that'll change what happens. That is exactly what happens. So now I am able to move this window around and resize it. I can also full screen it. I can make it smaller. So now we kind of have this little desktop mode thing going on. And of course, if you wanted it to be a different size, you can make it 19 uh, 1920 by 1080. If you paste that in instead and you fire that up, what you're going to get is going to be this. You'll have that exact same thing, except now it's on a larger canvas. It's on this widescreen larger thing. Although for some reason I can move this around, but it's not giving me the handle to be able to resize it. So that is a little bit odd. And obviously the scaling is very, very wrong there as well. I just minimized it and I don't know how to get it back. I can also still see the shadow of where it just was. If I go here, can you see there's, yeah, there's an obvious shadow of where it's still, uh, where it used to be. I guess I can grab it back by going in like that. So yeah, definitely still some quirks, some weird things going on with the pixel doing this, but let's grab the OnePlus Open. I don't actually know what will happen. I imagine with the Samsung phone, you're probably just gonna get Dex or something like that, but we'll try the Open and then maybe we'll try Samsung as well. Okay, so these are the current settings on my OnePlus Open, and I am doing this through regular screen copy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the right screen. We're going to do the open a terminal here thing, and we're going to do this again, but this time in the virtual window. And this appears to be remarkably similar to the Pixel, except it is even more broken. So maybe we need to try this in the 1920 by 1080 uh, way, because obviously that's not usable. Scaling is once again looking quite weird and that did not help at all. So I think now it's time to switch to the Z Fold 6 and see what we get there. Okay, this is interesting. So I did the virtual window, went straight to the virtual window. And what we have here is kind of odd, right? Like you can see my phone is not showing what is being shown here. And I got the pop up saying that it was new Samsung DeX. So I think it's trying to do DeX, but the scaling is throwing it off. So let's try the bigger one. So to me, this looks like it's basically just trying to run the new Samsung DeX, but again, the scaling is a little bit strange. It's 1920 by 1080, but it still does look like everything's kind of blown up a little bit. If you want to run DeX on your computer this way, there is an application that will do that. So don't do it this way. I just wanted to see what would happen, and that's what will happen. Of course, you can just do the regular screen copy shortcut and just mirror your normal screen, and that should work just fine. As you can see here, no problem with that at all, and that's probably how this is going to be more useful.
Now, there are some other features in this application. I think that you can actually push an APK over to your phone and have it be installed. You can also do this wirelessly with only a couple of hoops to jump through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to my original video from a 2.2 version a year ago, and you'll see some of that stuff talked about there. And then, of course, I'll also put a link to their GitHub page so that you can download it and get started yourself. At the end of the day, though, I think that this is one of the better options on the market to mirror your phone screen onto your computer, making it totally controllable. And it's something that I continue to find use for. The virtual screen thing is cool. And I have a feeling that somebody is going to figure out something interesting to use it for, maybe even on these Pixel phones. Maybe even it's you. And if it is, drop a comment down below on your methodology. Did you try the taskbar app? Did it work very well? Again, let me know in those comments down below. But guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.